Dynamic Excel dashboards are just cool. And in this video, I'm going to show you my simple method for creating that dynamic functionality. Let's get into it. Welcome back to the Excel Dashboards for Beginners series. I'm Chris, I'm an Excel VBA developer, YouTube content creator. We have a weekly Excel VBA video here on the channel. It's my mission to help you push your career forward using Excel VBA. So if you're not already subscribed, please consider doing so. Dynamic functionality is one of the things that makes an Excel dashboard cool. And there's actually more than one way we can create dynamic functionality in Excel. We can use pivot tables, we can use VBA code, or we can use my favorite technique that we're going to demonstrate in this video that's really worked for me over the years. Now, each of these approaches has its pros and cons. We're going to discuss those at the end of the video. But first, let's get into the demonstration. Now, what we've got here is a simplified version of our cool dynamic function on the dashboard. It's all on one sheet, which is going to allow you to understand it. We've got our data here. We've got a smaller data set that I've generated for a nice, easy example. Then we've got our dynamic function over here. Keep an eye on these numbers while I change the month. I'm changing the month now. I can see these numbers changing. We've got the month total here. Then we've got the total for each of these expenditure items. When we change the month, the values change. That is our dynamic function, a simplified example. What are we going to do? We're going to go ahead, delete all of these formulae and then build them all again. So firstly, at the top, you're going to need a drop down menu for the user to easily select the month. And if you don't have to do a drop down menu, check out our videos on drop down menus. So our first challenge is to find the first row that this month appears in. And we are assuming we're going to have to make some assumptions. We are assuming our data is sorted in terms of the date. So for example, in this case, we'd say, okay, what's the first row that June appears on? So stop the video. What formula do we have that might help us to do this? Well, in this case, we're going to use the match formula. Now, remember the match formula tells us where a value appears in a range of values. So you might be saying, but Chris, this June value, it appears many times in the data set. Well, the match formula, if we set it up, set it up properly, is going to choose the first occurrence of that value. So it's exactly what we need. So I look at value is going to be our value uh, kind of selection value there. And then a lookup array. So here we need to select all of the months, but we need to make a decision here. Again, another assumption. How much data are we going to have in this database? We need the formula to encompass all possible data. I'm going to go to 10,000 rows, but that's an important assumption there. And it's assumption that we're going to write down. I'm literally going to write it down in a second in the spreadsheet to make sure I'll tell the customer that. So we're going to assume 10,000 rows match, uh, max and then the match type is important. We do need the match type here. Otherwise, we're going to get some unpredictable behavior. Set this to zero for exact match. And as promised, I'm going to go ahead here and write down our assumption, which is max 10,000 rows of data. And this is literally what I do uh, on my client projects, rows of data. As I make those assumptions, write them down, and then I make sure I'm explaining them to the customer as we go through the project. So we've got our start row there, 36. So is it right? Well, let's change the value to January. And then what do we get? Taking this back to January here. What do we get? We've got a value of one there. That seems to make sense. What if we change this to February? We've now got a value of nine, and February is, just checking at the bottom of Excel here, February is the ninth value in the data set there. So that seems seems to make sense, but we don't want the kind of uh, order in the data set. We actually need the row number. So we need to make an, a quick adjustment here. Our data set starts in row four. So what adjustment can we make to this formula to get the right value here? We can just go plus three and that's kind of move the data down, if you like, we've now got the row number. So that's part one complete. And this is quite an intricate process, work through it step by step, 
and we will get there. Select the end row. So again, stop the video. What formula could we use now to get us the end row? And in this case, we want row 11 because the last uh, entry for January is in row 11. What formula might allow us to do that? Well, the logic I use here is if we count the number of occurrences in the data set, add that on to our start row that's going to give us the end row and again we're assuming that the, the data is sorted in terms of day but this approach uh, certainly works so we're going to say equal and then count if and then we're going to uh, select the data again so we're going to make an assumption here so let's say c4 to c10,000 so again we're assuming max 10,000 rows of data so that's our range. Then what's our criteria going to be? Well, it's going to be that month selection. So just go up to the top here. I'm going to put absolute references in using the F4 key, not absolutely necessary in this case. So what have we got? Count if returning a value of eight. So when we put a formula in, what do we do? Always test the formula and we can see we have eight values. Now I'm just looking at the bottom of Excel. It's counting the values for me. Uh, let's test it twice. Uh, let's have February here. And how many times did February occur? And the formula is saying uh, nine. And I can see that we have nine occurrences in February here. So that gives us the number of occurrences, but that's not quite the end row, is it? So how would we find the end row? Well, if we plus this to the start row, the start row plus the number of occurrences should give us the end row or should at least get us close to the end row. So we can just put a simple addition on the end of this formula that's going to give us there's some weird formatting going on on this sheet so i'm just going to clear the formats there alt h e f that gives us a value of 21 take this back to january and now we're getting a value of 12 so it's saying january the last entry for january is in row 12 that's not quite right we just need uh, an adjustment on this formula minus one at the end is going to give us consistently accurate results alt h e f to clear that weird formatting not sure where that's coming from so we're starting on row four ending on row 11 let's test it starting on row four ending on row 11 let's test it for march going to march now starting on row 21 ending on row 24 so whenever we put something in we test it i know it's feeling painfully slow but this is what it's like guys real world spreadsheet programming slow and steady always wins the race so now we've got these concat what do we mean by concat it's concatenation concatenation we're going to be using the indirect formula the indirect formula can read a, a text string as a formula which is super cool don't worry if you don't understand that we're going to see the power of indirect in a second so what we want to do here is define the month range of the month that we currently have selected so if we had january selected what would want to appear in uh, this row which is row 10 so cell i10 would be um so we're talking about the month here so it would be c4 to c11 we'd want that written out like this c4 to c11 this is what we're looking for but obviously we don't want to enter the values we want a formula to do that for us and we're going to use a, a concatenation here so you're going to hit equals and then speech marks and c and then the and sign the and sign super useful informally and in vba uh, for connecting text strings together so we're going to say c and then you know yeah we could just type four in like this but that wouldn't be very dynamic would it because that wouldn't change with the user selection so we can select our start row here then we're going to need another and sign then we're going to need that colon that we always get informally and then the c again and another speech mark to close that text string and and sign and finally select our end row cell so that's how you put it together now that's complicated i don't even know if, if that's right but don't worry it doesn't matter if you don't get it right first time i never get it right first time i'll be fired up if this is right i'm going to hit enter 
and C4 to C11. It does look like I got this one right, but don't worry. I did a practice run before recording this video. Let's change the value. C12 to C20 for February. Yes, that seems to be accurate. If you're enjoying this content, just to let you know, I do a daily video on Facebook and Instagram under the hashtag Your Daily Tiger. Let's get back into the demonstration. Okay, so uh, what's the weakness of this formula? Well, it'd be good to have absolute references in that. That means we can copy this formula down, putting the absolute references in using the F4 key. Hit enter now, so we can now auto fill down, control D on the Windows PC takes the formula down. So we've got our month there. The month is in column C. So stop the video. Can you do the category formula? Can you do the amount formula too? So the category is in column D. So we can go ahead and just substitute these in here. And then the amount formula is in column E. So we can go ahead and substitute the E's in here. Okay, there we go. And that gives us our text string. Now, in this case, we're just using the cell references. Now, we're going to build towards understanding this more sophisticated example that's on the engine sheet but don't worry if you don't get this yet but what you can see on the engine sheet is we're actually using a sheet reference as well so our example to keep it simple for learning purposes we're just using the cells but for future reference and you can see the example in the workbook you want to think about integrating sheet names as well into these concatenations that are going to work with the indirect formula but don't worry we're going to work towards understanding this sheet you're probably not going to understand it yet so we're now ready for our dynamic month total and let's get straight into the indirect formula quite difficult to explain the indirect formula but it's going to read a text string indirectly so it's not just going to put it into the formula it's going to kind of read it as a text string terrible explanation don't worry about my explanation we're going to see it in action now so stop the video what cell are we going to hit next to get our month total what cell are we going to hit next? We're going to hit the amount cell here. And then we need a sum formula, of course. So back to the beginning of the formula, sum, open brackets. And then we're going to need two brackets at the end of the formula there. I'm just checking it through here yeah, in column E. This looks reasonable enough. Will it work? I'm not too bothered if it works or not. If it doesn't work, it's perfectly normal to have to fix it. Let's go ahead, hit enter, and we do have a value in here. We don't have a zero. That's a good start. So it's telling us um, for February, we've spent £397.74. So let's prove that with a kind of manual sum formula. So going sum, going to the February values, just kind of doing this manually, looking across, using the keyboard, of course, to navigate. And then we can see, yep, so we've done a quick test there. So what if we change the month to March here? Change the March, got 52733. I'm just going to go across to the March values, just select the values here. And I can see at the bottom of Excel, 527.33. So I'm reasonably happy with that. So now, yeah, we've got the glorious dynamic functionality. Take the time to play with it. You've worked hard for this and it's already looking pretty cool even without being on a dashboard this is looking pretty cool just with a few more formulae uh, connecting the cell the sheets together you can move towards this effect we've got here it's almost exactly the same we've got the month selection and then we've got the values coming up here the principle is the same this example is a little bit more complicated it's all there in the workbook click through the cells, work it out. You can create this kind of workbook and dashboard yourself. So we've got our dynamic month total there, control B, let's just make that stand out. But we wanna do more than that. We wanna have our totals for each of our spending categories. And we want these totals, of course, to be dynamic. So when we change the month, these totals update. So some, for example, we can find out how much fuel, how much did we spend on fuel in October? So. The principle is the same. We've got all the tools we need, but what formula brings it all together? Stop the video. What formula brings it all together? Well, I'm always talking about data analysis formula. These are kind of uh, underrated in Excel. You know, people always talk about pivot tables using VBA data analysis formula. Super powerful. So we can use some if here, some if at least I think it's going to work with some if, but we're going to see how it goes. So some if and then I'm reading the go to the other side of the screen here. I'm reading the formula prompts here. 
sum if so we need a range a criteria and a sum range that first range excel is saying where are the values that you want to differentiate by where are the values that tell me what to include and what to exclude in the calculation so in this case we're talking about the expenditure item so it's category so it's going to be our category cell here so we have to say indirect of course and just select this cell and I'm going to hit F4 because I do want this uh, to be an absolute reference and then the criteria well the criteria is going to be the value in the table that's the value we want to pick out of the data set add up those values and then sum range where are the numbers we actually want to sum up and that's going to be in the amount column so we can go ahead um, hit the comma again which is going to highlight the components of the formula that we want to work with and then just select the amount formula there and this of course is also going to be indirect and let's get that spelling spot on and then double bracket at the end so this should work We've got the summit formula and we're saying to excel uh, here is the information that i want you to use to include or exclude the values and then this is the criteria i want you to include and then this is the range that we want to use to actually add up the values and we're doing all that using this cool indirect formula which is facilitating this dynamic function is it going to work the moment of truth let's go ahead so we've got minus two, three, five, four, four. That's in October. So just to keep it all in our screenshot, uh, I'm going to go back to January here. So 78 pounds on fuel in January. What have we got? Yeah, we've got one expenditure item for fuel in January. What about February? Any fuel? Yeah, I can see something in February. So let's go to February here. February, 93 pounds on fuel in February. Yes, we have 93 pounds there seems to be reasonable enough so i'm going to go ahead and drag this formula down but before i do can you see the mistake i made when i built the formula we need another absolute reference here without that absolute reference that reference is going to come down with the formula and that's going to give us uh, an error there so now we can go control d auto fill down and the formulae have come down so how might we test this yeah we could go through and test each uh, expenditure expenditure item individually but if everything's worked then this should add up to the total for the month you know all of those expenditure items should add up to the total for the month and i'm comparing this value in row 25 with this value in row 14 that's a nice check uh, for us to do so february seems to work Let's go somewhere in August and we can see we've got consistent values there and let's go to December and I can see that these two values are consistent. So that is what's happening in the engine. That's the mechanics of how we create this powerful dynamic function. Now it's your challenge to go ahead, try to understand my more sophisticated example. Can you build a sheet reference into these indirect formulae? If you can do that, you'll be able to create this beautiful uh, dashboard effect, selecting the months, getting this beautiful update supported by the visuals. Powerful, powerful stuff your customer is going to love. So that's how I build dynamic quality into Excel dashboards. Now, over the years, I've tried lots of different approaches for creating this dynamic quality. I've tried pivot tables. I've tried VBA. And more recently, I've favored the approach that I've applied in this video. But let's just briefly talk about the others. And you might want to add them to your toolkit. Firstly, pivot tables, super powerful. And if we use a pivot table, we can use things like slices to add to the visual appeal and the power of the dashboard. I've just found pivot tables slightly unwieldy to work with, slightly unpredictable in terms of the way the data is going to display. I have used them before, but I preferred I prefer the instant quality of this setup using indirect. Then we have VBA, of course, and I have had requests from clients, you know, clients that don't want pivot tables. They want a super clean VBA based solution. And if you can handle the coding, you can do it and your client is okay about it. VBA 
could be the way to go. But one problem with VBA is, again, we don't have this instant quality, this instant calculation. You always have to trigger the macro somehow using a button or maybe on some kind of worksheet update. So for me, that's a drawback, but sometimes I use that. And if you want to put yourself in the best position, have all of the approaches in your toolkit and then call on the one that's most appropriate for the situation.